Hey everyone, I've been playing around with Google AI Studio a little bit more. Check out this video if you want to see how it does as a personal tutor. But I got to wondering, since it can see my screen, can it identify usability or UX issues in a design? So that's what we're going to find out in this video. I've got a handful of screenshots here, things that I would consider to be usability or UX issues, and I want to show these to the AI, see if it can identify them. Now, when I go to edit the video, I'll add some comments of the things that I thought were wrong. Obviously, some of this is subjective, but there are some best practices and common heuristics that are used in UX, so I want to see if AI can spot those problems. Back here in Google AI Studio, if you haven't used this yet, just go to aistudio.google.com and then come into Stream Real Time. This is totally free at the moment. You do need to be logged in with a Google account, though. And also know that anything you share on your screen or record with your microphone can be used to train their model. So don't share any sensitive or confidential information. All right, I'll start recording my microphone and then I'll share out my desktop to go through these screenshots. Hey, Google. Yes, how can I help you? I've got a deck full of screenshots and I want you to look at the screenshots and see if you can identify any usability or UX issues that we might need to go fix. Let me share my screen. Okay, I'm ready. Please share your screen. Okay, here's the first screenshot. Take a look and let me know if you see any usability issues here or anything that we need to fix. Okay, I see the screenshot. The error message, ZIP code is required, is displayed at the top of the payment information section. This is a usability issue because it's not clear where the user should enter their zip code. It's likely that the zip code field is missing or not easily identifiable. Okay, what about this next one? Okay, I'm looking at the next screenshot. This one shows a more detailed payment information form. Here, the user is prompted to enter their credit card number, CVV number, and expiration date. I see some red asterisk indicating those fields are mandatory. Do you see any issues that would cause the user to be confused on this page? Yes, I do see one potential issue that could confuse users. The field for the CVV number is labeled simply CVV number with what is this next to it. While a user might know what a CVV number is, the what is this link might create some confusion as to whether it is needed or optional, or might make a user question the validity of the form. It might be helpful to explain that this is the three or four digit security code on the back of the credit card, right next to the label itself. What about the placement of the buttons? You're right. The placement of the buttons could be a bit confusing. The next button is on the left, while the cancel button is on the right. Usually on forms, the primary action button, such as next or submit, is placed on the right, so it's more prominent and easy for the user to locate. This is a good catch, and switching their locations would be recommended. Okay, what about this next one? Okay, I'm looking at the new screenshot. This one shows a text input field with a prompt asking users about their vacation plans. The text says, if you are currently thinking about planning a vacation for yourself in the next 12 months, tell us where you want to go and briefly describe how far along in the planning process you are. There is also a character limit of 200. I don't see any major usability issues here. It looks clear and straightforward. What about the overall look of it? Okay, looking at the overall design, I would say the blue background with the pink text field provides a decent color contrast. However, the design feels a bit basic and could benefit from a more engaging visual style. There's nothing particularly wrong with it, but it's not very exciting or inviting for the user. Okay, what about this next one? Okay, I'm now looking at the next screenshot. This one shows a logout confirmation message with the prompt, Are you sure you want to exit? There are two options, accept or decline on the same line. I think this is fine. I don't see any usability issues with this screen. Okay, how about this? Okay, I'm looking at the calendar date picker now. The selected date is highlighted and the user can easily navigate through the months and days to select the correct date. I see the option to select today's date as well. I also see a clear button. 
which could be confusing for some users as they might expect a cancel button instead. I don't think that is too much of a usability issue, however. What about for somebody who was born 30 years ago, if they had to use this to select their birth date? That's a good point. For someone born 30 years ago, they would need to click the previous month button many times to get back to their birth year. This could be a very tedious process. This could definitely be improved by adding a dropdown or a text field so they can type in their birth year directly. Okay, how about this design? Okay, okay, I'm looking at the room selection screen now. The page presents a list of available rooms with their names, prices, and a select button. The prices are also shown with including taxes and fees text, which is helpful. The selected room is highlighted with a line and the option to read more this is useful for users to get more information on the room before selecting it. I think this page is clear and doesn't present any immediate usability issues. Do you see any alignment issues of the buttons and the room names? Yes, I do see one alignment issue. The select buttons are not perfectly aligned with the room names on the left. There is a small offset, and it's especially noticeable because they are all in a row. It may be a small detail, but it can look unpolished. Adjusting the alignment would improve the overall look. Okay, how about this? Okay, I'm looking at the last screenshot. This one shows a generic error message with the text, sorry, an error occurred. Please try again. This message is not very helpful and it doesn't give the user much to work with. A good error message should describe the problem clearly and tell the user how to resolve it. What about this one? Okay, I'm now looking at the PayPal payment confirmation screen. It shows the amount to be sent, a change payment method link, the fee, the total, you'll pay amount, and the submit and cancel buttons. It's a pretty straightforward and standard screen. I don't see any immediate usability or design issues. What about the button on the page? You mean the placement of the submit query button? It's positioned at the bottom of the screen with a cancel button below, which is a common pattern. I don't see any usability issues related to their position. What about the label used on the button? You're referring to the submit query label on the button. I think that label is not descriptive enough for the action being performed. A label like confirm payment or send money would be more clear for users as submit query is a more technical term. Okay, what about this one? Okay, looking um, at the percent complete dropdown, the dropdown displays options like 0%, 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. The current selection is highlighted. It seems clear, and I don't see any usability issues with this component. What about the sort order of the dropdown? You're right, right. sort order isn't logical. The drop-down lists the options as 50%, 0%, 100%, 25%, 50%, 75%. It should ideally start from 0% and then increase to 100%. It appears to be in a random order and this could confuse the user. Okay, what about this one? Okay, I'm looking at the country drop-down menu. The list appears to be in alphabetical order, which is good. The current selection is also highlighted and the scroll bar allows the user to navigate through the long list. It appears to be working correctly. Okay, final screen. Do you see any issues on this one? Okay, I'm looking at the final screen. This one is a patient portal login page, and users can either log in with their account number or their phone number and date of birth. It seems like the label on top of the account number field is missing. Also, the field for phone number is placed above the date of birth field, which is not very intuitive as people normally think of date of birth before their phone number. Okay, some thoughts. So it did okay. It actually felt like it was doing better in the beginning of identifying things that I would see as a human and then as we went along, it felt like it took a little bit more nudging or prompting to eventually get where I was going. Interestingly, I ran this a couple of times before I started recording it, and previously it actually did really well. It actually got almost everything and even suggested stuff that I wasn't seeing. 
So I was pretty impressed. And then I started this session and I started a recording and it felt like it didn't do so well. So definitely not deterministic, not something you could rely on every time, as we know about generative AI overall. But I thought it was an interesting test, considering that it's in the experimental mode. I think it's pretty impressive what it did do. Maybe this is something you could run your designs through initially just to pick up on big things. But it seems like, at least at the moment, the humans are going to need to be involved as well. If you like this, give me a thumbs up on the video so YouTube knows to share it with more people. And also consider subscribing for more content like this. Thanks so much for watching.